guys for coming. We're going to just go over a few things today. Um, a little bit about guy badge and procedures and just kind of like what we are in intramural sports and some basketball specific stuff we'll get into later. So first of all, I'm Ryan. I'm a, I'm a graduate assistant here, so I help run the intramural program and the club sports program. Um, yeah, this is my fourth and final semester, fingers crossed. So we're hoping to graduate this year on time. But uh, yeah, thank you. I'm Dan Payne, I'm the competitive sports coordinator. So I run the intramural program, the club sports program, and our, uh, well, that's it, actually. <laughs> and uh, two facilities. And then, um, yeah, I've been here, uh, this is my fifth year, so I'm just excited for another intramural basketball season. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Brett Lynn. I'm an official and a supervisor, so y'all will either see me supervising a whole night of basketball, or you'll see me on a court probably making a fool of myself running. But <laughs> yeah, I've been here. Uh, two years, I think. I don't know anymore. Roughly. Yeah, roughly two years, so. Yeah, I'm Landon. I'm also a supervisor and an official. You mainly see me as an official. Um, I've been here for two years, too, and uh, excited. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the enthusiasm. So our goals today are to give you a little bit of intramural basics and to give you some basketball rules and particularly to go over some sportsmanship stuff um, and some guidelines of that. So basics for you, um, your responsibilities. So you guys have created teams, so good job. Step one done. And then you're also responsible for inviting people to your team and adding and subtracting people from your roster and whatnot. Um, you're also responsible for making sure that everybody's eligible, so they have to sign the waiver and get a pass and all that stuff. So again, getting them onto your team. You also are responsible for knowing our policies, so thus this meeting. So hopefully you'll have a better understanding of those by the end of tonight. And then just game day stuff, so communicating when the game times are and making sure that you know when you show up and that all your players are on time. And then sportsmanship. And then if we do have forfeits, thankful. Good. Also, feel free to stop me at any time and ask questions. Yes. So, if like only four people show up from on my team, I have to pay for it? Yep. Pay Not quite. So, with, it depends, correct versus men's and women's and whatnot, but forfeits are if you don't show up at all. Basically. Oh, okay. Or if you have not enough players to be played. Basketball is really simple. You have to have the two people show up to not forfeit. So. Are you sure? Yep. Playing with two people? Well, you can play with three people, but we give you a default if you show up with only two. Oh, okay. Okay. So if two people show up, you can default. We'll get, we'll actually go over a slide on default and okay. four later. But basically, make sure you don't not tell us that you're coming. Okay. If you tell us you're coming, you're not coming. You're probably fine. Okay. Cool. Any other questions? Yeah. There's not like a paper waiver if one has to sign, right? There's not a paper waiver. We can help with. You're going to reissue. Your, we're going to reissue your specific waiver because we move you teams. So that's a specific thing for you. But we can reissue that to you as well. Any other questions? Good, awesome. So, what are we? So intramural sports is, we go by these three things, and most of them, as you can see, have nothing to do with wing. Um, so we are important because we want to involve students on campus. We want them to play fairly and safely, and we want them to learn something. So. Sports is a great vehicle in order for us to teach lessons. That's why a lot of high schoolers and college athletes, they will put things on their resume that say, like, I learned leadership, or I learned communication, I, work, I learned hard work and dedication, those kinds of things. We also teach things in our environment, but it's a supplement to your ac or academic career here. So we, are, we provide an opportunity for you to have a recreational zone where you can have fun and play fairly and safely and enjoy your time and get a little bit of that um, fogginess out of your brain from having to go to class all day. Because I know I hate staring at the computer. Any questions on any of that? This bottom bullet point is very important. We are, we facilitate a competitive environment, right? You can't have a game without slight, uh, without basic competition, but winning really isn't important to us. It holds no standard or weight pretty much on anything we do until the playoffs. So the first part of the season is entirely just for you guys to have fun. We don't care who wins, we don't care who loses. We have a seeding criteria for the playoffs that I basically just throw out the window because it's more important for me that you're gonna be able to make your game 
And so I kind of use it as a rough guideline, but it's really not important at all. Good? Awesome. Cool. So people who can play on your team, basically any of the students. Graduate student, undergraduate student, they're welcome to play. Full-time faculty and staff are also welcome to play. If you'd like to incorporate one of your professors to play on the team, uh, that would be a first in my time here. But varsity players and club sport athletes are restricted in their participation. So you can have student athletes and club athletes play on your teams, um, but they're restricted because they cannot play their same sport. So as Bretland was alluding to about basketball team earlier, we were talking basketball. They are not allowed to come play on your team. You you can't have our six foot seven foot forwards playing on your team. Yeah. You, you can't have the varsity players come play on your basketball team. They can play indoor soccer. They, they cannot play basketball. Same thing with the club. So we have club soccer. We don't have any club basketball teams, so that's not really applicable to you, but like the club teams, so they have first year teams as well. Any questions? Cool. It's about free agents. So free agents are a mechanism for us to incorporate people that don't already have a friend group to play with. So you'll notice sometimes you have pending participants that you don't know on your teams that are like, I don't know who this guy is, but he requested to join my team. So those, that's the free agent process. So we can have people sign up individually and they are attempting to play on another team, an A team. And so they try to sign up for all these various time slots. And so you can accept them. They're legitimate players. They're, they have bought the pass and they can play and you can add players to your roster through that means. So if you are, you're, you don't have enough people on your team, you have like six guys, and you're like, you know what? After week one, we realize we're not quite in good enough shape to play a 40 minute game. Maybe we need a couple more guys. You can add three agents. You can add three agents now. Their contact information, once you accept them, will pop up so you can email them. If you also want to know, I can look at three agents for you and you can email me and ask questions about them. Good. Uh, you cannot have guests play. So they do have to be students of the university, so guests are not permitted to play. They can come watch if they if you want to get them into the area with a guest pass, but they cannot. Good. Cool. Leagues. So you're probably all on different leagues. So we have sing, you're allowed to play. Sorry, we have men's, we have women's, we have co rec, and we have fraternity. The men's and the fraternity are the same. So they're all men's leagues. And then we have women's which are women's teams, and then the co recs are both. The car have men and women playing at the same time. <clears throat> You're allowed to play on more than one team. So I can play on a men's team and I can play on a car rec team, but I cannot play on a men's team and a fraternity team. Because they're in the same position. Any questions on that? Cool. Now, game time. So game time is forfeit time. So you have to be there at the game time. If your game is scheduled for 7 o'clock and you are there at 7.05, you have forfeited. If you're there at 7.01, you have forfeited. The opponents determine whether or not they give you a great experience. So, I just suggest you show up 15 minutes early. Easy. Everybody has to be on the roster in Fusion before they can play. So we have to be able to see your picture. They can add there right there that night, that's fine. We don't really care when they get on the roster, but as long as they're on the roster, we know that they have completed all the steps. So we know that they signed the waiver, we know that they have a membership, we know that they're eligible. So they can sign up right there, but they do have to be on the roster before they're allowed to play. And our lovely staff over here are not going to let them if they're not. So don't think they're victims, or don't think that they're being mean to you. They're just doing what we tell them to. I would avoid having players add on site. It's just harder, and it usually is a time crunch. And Fusion is always known to not work when you need it to work. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Fusion works sometimes. Yeah. Most of the time. You can check in two ways on the primary. So with your physical MTSU ID is the best way. Just bring your, just bring your ID. It's the easiest way to get in. You have to use it to get into the building. I guess you don't have to, but. You can't use it to get into the building, so back to school is really easy. Just bring it to get into the building, bring it to get to our games. Or you can use the Get Mobile app. It's different than the Campus Rec app. So 
So this is a different app, but it also functions the same. Questions on any of that? Cool. Yeah. Now, as promised, defaults and forfeits. So defaults are you guys telling us that you're not going to make it. So usually, that's done. You can email me, or you can call me before 3:30 on the day of your game. 3:30 is a pretty hard deadline because I like to be out of the office by 3:30. Kind of. I try to be out of the office. If I'm going to be out of the office, I'd like to be out of the office by 3:30. So let me know by then, and then we'll default your team. It's a courtesy thing. We want you to tell us that you're not going to be there so we can tell our staff. So if you have the 9 o'clock game, we're not sitting around waiting and they can just go home. And it's also a courtesy to your opponents that they don't drive all the way here or come all the way down just to find out that they don't have a game. So it's a courtesy that you're awarding to your opponents and also our staff. If you default, you get a loss on your record, which again, winning losing doesn't really matter. But you do get a loss on your record. You get a sportsmanship rating of a 7, which Dan's going to talk about the sportsmanship rating, what that means. But it is a passing grade. That's the important part that you need to know now. Is that a 7 is a good rating, a good enough rating. Um, and then moving into forfeits, if you default twice, you do get a forfeit. It's seen as the same thing. So we want you to show up for your games. You signed up to play. And we want your opponents to get those games. And so we expect you to show up. So for that reason, if you do default twice, we'll count it as a forfeit. But you did get one freebie. Cool. Questions on defaults? No. Excellent. Forfeits. So if you don't tell us and you don't show up at all, it's a forfeit. Forfeits are bad. So forfeits are still a loss, but the sportsmanship rating, as you can see, is much worse. It's just three, which is not a passing grade, nowhere close. And again, Dan's going to talk about sportsmanship ratings and what they mean. But you also get a fine. So we do fine people for, sport, or for not showing up for forfeits. And again, that's a reflection of our staff's time. Right? We're paying our staff to referee your game, and they're not being able to, and so we charge people. Two forfeits. If you forfeit twice, we just boot you from the league. We assume you're not showing up anymore, you're done. And there's no way for you mathematically to make the playoffs. Pretty sure. Yes? So the default. If like a team defaults twice, yes. that becomes a forfeit. If yes. you default a third time, is that a default or Back is that an honor? Point. So you have to default four times to get removed from the Yeah, that. That would, it would depend on the circumstances and whether or not we just kick them out for that. So it will change slightly. It depends on whether or not they've communicated that with us and whatnot and what, what the circumstances are regarding it. But I don't think I've had anybody default more than twice. Well, in soccer last and year, we had that, like, sorority team yeah. football every week. So some of them are, there are weather exceptions. Like, sometimes they're labeled as defaults in the app based on the fact that, like, weather wasn't there. Or, like, you guys had the lights go out. So, like, that was counted yeah. as, some of those were counted as defaults. And so we just, Like, the ones that I got from the team, yeah. that's what I was asking. Yeah. Okay. Plus, you guys also had multiple teams default in a row. Your yeah, team was just on the receiving end. Yeah. You guys were just on the receiving end of this other team's yeah. defaulting a lot. Okay. Thus, why the rules are in place, but they're not perfect. Okay. Yeah. So if you go against a default, you get a win, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Congrats, you won a game. It's the only games I ever won when I play, or when nobody else showed. So, good, I got one on top of that. So, like, say my team shows up and like I can make it, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't matter. Nope, doesn't matter. It does not matter who shows up as long as players show. Up. Okay. Yep. You're, like I said, in the responsibilities, like you don't have to be at everything as a captain. Right? You're just facilitating your team, but that puts extra emphasis on the fact that you do tell your players the rules and stuff. Right? So that you do tell this information to them. Good? Cool. Any other questions? Cool. So, into some basketball specific rules. So, basics all of our leagues are 5v5. Basketball doesn't change much. From high, we do use the high school rules. They're adapted high school rules. But we use most of the same high school rules. So all of our leagues are still 5v5s. You have to have three players to start a game. Like you have four, three players. So that's it. That's all you need. That's pretty easy. Correct. So if you're on, if you do have a correct team, I know there are a couple in the audience today, you need these ratios. So if you're playing with five players, you'll have 
three of one gender and two of the other. So you'll have three guys and two girls, or three girls and two guys, one. You can also have four players, so two and two. No exceptions, you can't play on four. And or three players, two and one. So you can't have more, like you can't have four guys play and one girl. That's not allowed. You can't have three and one. You have to ball. Plus or minus two. You're not allowed more than plus or minus one. Good. We changed this this year. So we're playing 10 minute quarters, four 10 minute quarters, just like high school. Yep. It said on the email that it was two halves. That's because I wrote the email a while ago. My apologies. I'm, I'm good with 10 minute quarters. Two and two halves. So. <laughs> what's that? What's that? Time? Time? You only have six minutes. Sit down. It did. It did. Like, who was you right? Were, especially when. None of us are in good enough. Especially when. Yeah. So. so. See. Football wasn't bad. The basketball halves were terrible. Y'all are speaking my language. <laughs> <laughs> you guys just had to play slower then. That's what I'm telling you. No, no, no. If you played a more methodical game, game yeah. you'd be fine. Yeah. You guys just like to play on the fast break the whole time. That's going to wear you out more. So we did change it to four 10 minute quarters. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. The running clock is still in effect though. So the clock will run for the entire first half. There's no stopping it unless you call timeout. Or we have a referee who's called timeout for some reason. It will stop in the last two minutes of the fourth quarter. So, so like it runs also on fouls? Like yes. Foul shots yep. So it runs on foul shots, it runs on free throws, it runs on foul reporting, all that stuff out of bounds. It just runs. Again, we have we have a schedule to keep, and if we stop the clock at everything, we can keep that schedule. So. Cool. Clock will stop whenever whistle after that. So normal rules for the most part, clock will stop. Questions on clocks? I got a couple more things. You do get we did limit the number of timeouts though this year. So because we're playing quarters we'll have more stoppages throughout the game. So in order to keep this the game flowing and the game moving on time and hopefully have you know then eight o'clock still tip off at eight o'clock. We did reduce the number of timeouts to take. But you'll get breaks more often. So. Those time, is it like one timeout per half or is it just two? Nope, periods? two whenever you want to use it. Okay. We, didn't, we thought about reducing it to one and thought, eh, we don't want to have, it just, you get like one strategy timeout at the end of the game and you get one freebie. There are many reasons want. strategy timeouts because yeah. you will get your breaks, you'll get three breaks in the yeah. game. Timeouts don't advance the whole lot. Yeah. What's the injury like? What happens when there's an injury? If there's an injury, the most likely you're referring if it's a little injury, like they're just walking off, we'll just call it a basic substitution, right? If, it's a, if it occurs as a substitution opportunity and they can walk off on their own power, we'll just probably run the clock. If it's, you know, the guy does something drastic and can't move, then we'll stop. Okay. But, any other questions? We're stopping the clock. Moving on. There's no overtime in the regular season. If you end in a draw, you end in a draw. This is tie in this sport. <laughs> you end in a tie, you end in a tie. We don't play overtime, like I said. We have to keep the game going. Cool. Well, now you get to listen to Dan. All right. Talk about some more stuff. Uh, start with mercy rules. We have these in place because it's like a good one out. Um, and so if our staff stop the clock, it's probably, and in the game, it's probably for one of these three things. So if you're going to beat by 50 um, with 10 minutes left, then game's over, 30 and 5, and 15 at 2. Now the 15 at 2 one is not a game ender, it's just a clock runner. So we just won't stop the clock under 2 minutes if one team's ahead by 15. Um, and again, these are, these are just first two little things. Um, you're, you're welcome to the time on the court. Like we consider, if you sign up, like that's your court for an hour, basically. So if this does happen, and we short you 10 minutes, you're welcome to stay for the rest of your allotted time and just scrimmage or practice or whatever. <clears throat> um, yeah, so basketball, we require numbers right on your jerseys. So um, it's great if you all have your own jerseys. That's awesome. Um, but if you don't, it's a big deal. We have our own that we'll check out. We have a checkout process that'll be stationed on court three, which is the one like on the wall. You walk into the gym, that first one right there is court one. It was one, two, three, so it's the one all the way on the right. Um, <clears throat> And you, or it doesn't have to be you, but any team representative can go to that table and just say, hey, I need some jerseys. 
our our staff there that'll check jerseys out for you, like record it numbers and give you what you need and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then yeah, just bring it back at the end. Um, so more equipment stuff, jewelry. Jewelry is probably our most strict like rule that we have, but across all internal sports, um, and it's strictly a safety thing, right? And so. Um, we, we do our best to teach our staff to be really strict on, on jewelry, so it's anything, like even that wristband they has got on his left wrist, right, like that is considered jewelry. A hat is considered jewelry. Um, any piercings are jewelry. Any, any wristbands, yeah, necklaces, anything like that. Um, that stuff's got to come off for all players during the game. <coughs> because believe it or not, there are some pretty nasty injuries that can occur just because you're wearing a necklace or something. Um, so, yeah. That's one that um, we'll just have to constantly, constantly like police, but um, it's great if you can just help us out with that. <clears throat> um, if you do have, someone does have a medical alert issue, like a medical bracelet or a medical necklace, take one of those, they just have to be taped down um, ahead of time and we just want to tell the supervisor, hey, I've got a medical alert bracelet for whatever it's for. Um, so our supervisors can respond if something happens to that. <clears throat> um, yeah, so in, in the basketball rules, you can get a technical foul, or that player can get a technical foul for wearing um, illegal equipment, so jewelry most of the time is what that's going to look like. <laughs> questions about jewelry? I have a question about the jerseys. I have one guy that doesn't have one right now. Cool. I don't know if I have one next week. He just gets a black shirt and puts a number on. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah. that's fine. I mean, um, especially just for one week. Okay. No big deal. I mean, or he could just put black, no number, and he could be zero. You know, you, as long as you check with the staff ahead of time, he checks in at zero. Do we have pockets or no? You can't have pockets in basketball. Yeah, that's just a bad That's just a flag football rule. That's just football where I bother you about that. Well, two years ago, you couldn't have pockets. And then last year, I was wearing no pockets the whole time. And they gave the halfway through. It was like, no, you don't have to have no pockets. I was like, you can wear the same pair of shorts every game. Like, we got to keep wearing the shorts now. I mean, those are your interruptions. They don't, they don't lie. <laughs> You've been in the gym, so. Yeah. Uh, do Jersey shirts work? Like I'm ordering shirts with our number. Yeah, totally fine. Totally fine. Yeah, as long as it has number, that's all we really care about. We don't care the color, and as long as it's nothing really like I've seen on the front. What about pocket on shirts? Pocket on shirts. Totally fine. Yeah. yeah. You said we can check out jerseys from uh, y'all. Right? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. On court three. <clears throat> Any more questions about equipment? Okay. Okay. All right. Keep going. This is just a public service announcement that we use the white three point line the white three-point line is the high school line, the black is the old college line, so we're using the white one. Um, let's go into some more rules. So because of the quarter change, so for those of you who aren't familiar, the high school rule changed two quarters this year, and so um, because of that, we changed the foul count, the like, team foul count per quarter, so there's no one and one anymore. It's just straight to the double bonus on the fifth team foul in each quarter. Um, so yeah, simple. Um, do we have questions about that? That is a pretty big change. Okay, cool. Um, this is the same fifth player foul per game equals to disqualification. Um, we do not shoot for technical fouls or intentional fouls. Um, it's just an automatic two points to the team and then still get the ball. <coughs> just because we have a lot of bad players and free throws are not free. <coughs> Even like intentional fouls at the end of the game? Yeah. Like Okay, so those are a little bit different. So if our, our officials call an intentional foul, I can give the signal. Okay. If reported as an intentional foul, it'll be a free two point. Okay. But if you're just fouling stop the clock back in, yeah, yeah. Well, it'll just be a normal. Okay, of course. Yeah. Yeah. So like our normal shooting fouls, two free throws? So normal shooting fouls in front of the three point line are two free throws. Unless you make it. If you make it, then you'll be, it's an end one, right? You get one free throw. If you're beyond the three point arc, you get fouled, you have to shoot it's three. Okay. Unless you make it in the yeah. Intentional fouls are like the flagrant foul one yeah, in the NBA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like if you just like do something bad. Because no one's going to get those. That's right. No, I don't know. Last, Last year, year we played the GBG team and they body slammed our six foot five players. Really? <laughs> that, that would be a that would be a flagrant foul. From the game. Yeah, I, I think I had one That was a flagrant foul. foul. Yeah. I don't. I don't think yeah. I have flagrant yeah. fouls on here, but flagrant fouls, yeah. any foul could be flagrant. Yeah, you see a little bit. You see a little bit. Cousin out of the Yes, so but the intentional you, you fouls. Do that. Yeah. The intentional fouls are just like a little bit more I think it was, physical I think it was contact. Probably like too much. Probably was. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Every, everybody on the team was trying to get him to get a question. Yeah. 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 So just to, so I understand this, the intentional fouls at the end of the game, like to stop the clock, they are not, or they are awarded two points. 
So oftentimes, when you're trying to stop the clock at the end of the game, like for strategy reasons, right, the officials do not call that an intentional foul. Okay, so this is like rule book language, right? So like in the basketball rule book, there's a section called intentional fouls. And intentional fouls are fouls that are excess force, basically, like during the play, like a shove, two-hand shove, right? Or a, someone smacks someone in the face, right? That kind of stuff, those are intentional fouls. But the little like fouls to stop the clock at the end, most of the time are not gonna be called as an intentional foul. We'll just get that person wrong. Intentional fouls when you don't make a play on the ball. You just try to hurt them. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions about fouls? All right, subs, just a reminder to have your subs checking at the table before coming in. They don't have to come in and be like, hey, I'm coming in for 22 or something like that. Just come up to the table and squat or sit on the floor by the table just so the scorekeeper has an opportunity to like communicate with officials and get subs to come in. Um, so just remember to do that. And wait to be beckoned onto the floor by officials. It's not always going to happen, but it is appreciated. A lot of times, if something happens on the floor, subs will just like run onto the floor. And it is better to wait to be back and on because the officials might have something to do. You know, they might have to like communicate first, and there's only like certain times when you come on. So just remind your folks to wait to be back and on to this morning. <clears throat> okay, that's pretty much it for the basketball rules. Do we have any other rules questions? Basketball rules questions. Yeah. Uh, do when we check out jerseys, if we do, is it like money that we pay, or is it just no. a rental? No, we'll just record whoever checks them out there in the number. Okay. And then uh, at, the, at the end, we'll just, so our staff will count like how many jerseys you're getting. You usually have bags of 12, and most of the time, your whole team needs them, we just check out the whole bag with you. Okay. And then you just bring all 12 back. Um, there will be like a consequence if like you lose one or someone walks off with one, you know? Um, but it usually doesn't happen, so don't worry about that. If you don't bring us back all the jerseys, then I can't do the bag back until we get all of them. Yeah. So, if your buddy leaves with it, you better call him to bring it back because we're not taking that back into it. Yeah. Any other rules, questions? Okay, I'm going to talk to you about the fun stuff, and that's sportsmanship. So, sportsmanship is a pillar of our program. Ryan talked a little bit about um, why we're here as intramural sports. And so, I'm going to dive into that a little bit more. One of those like bullets that he talked about was learning, and you're like, it doesn't make sense, right? I'm just here to play. Here to play and have fun. Believe it or not, we have to like my job is to prove that participants are learning while participating in my programs. So intramural sports. So um, I threw some learning outcomes, what we call them, up here on the board. Like these are things you're supposed to be learning while participating in intramural sports. I'm going to dive into the sportsmanship one a little bit. Um, so we use the scale right for sportsmanship. It's zero to ten. So every game, the staff are going to rate you on that zero. To 10 being perfect, zero being that the game ended because the team was so terrible, right? Their sportsmanship was terrible. Um, there are some like markers in there. So if you saw before, default, lose by default, you get a seven sportsmanship. If you win by default, you get a 10 sportsmanship, like that kind of thing. But for the most part, it's just a behavior scale, right? And how did your team behave towards, you know, just behaving generally? Um, so there's a there's a limit like you have to get a seven to qualify for playoffs. Every team gets in the playoffs regardless of their win loss record. It doesn't matter. You can be on four and get in, be four and zero and get in. Um, but you have to have that seven point zero average, which is average. And um, yeah, so I highlighted forfeits here because you get a three point zero sportsmanship if your team forfeits, and so that brings your average down drastically. There's only four games during our season. So it's going to be hard to get up. Just another incident and not to forfeit. We're trying to get teams just to tell us ahead of time. Ahead of time. <clears throat> okay, so um, back to that learning part of it a little bit. So um, how to behave during competition is one of the things that you're supposed to be learning in that sportsmanship bullet. So, you know, are you the player that showboats when you win, right? When you throw down a massive dunk, you show up down the floor and rub it in the opponent's face, right? Are you the player when you lose, and maybe you lose by 20 and you had a rough night, are you the one walking off the floor blaming the refs, blaming your teammates, blaming everyone under the sun, right? Because you because you had a bad night. So those kind of things happen, like we, we get it, right? That's 
why I love my jobs, because I get to teach some of those lessons through sports. And so we know that players are going to react, right? Competition oftentimes brings some of those behaviors out, and that's why we're in a college campus, because it's supposed to be a safer place to learn how to deal with that kind of stuff. Um, so we're here to, to, to help you through that stuff. Um, the staff on site understand that philosophy, especially our supervisors. Our supervisor is going to wear the blue polo like Brett's got on over there, someone similar to this, like that. So if you're having an issue or if you have a player on your team that is like they just can't calm down, right? Send them off, step up, be a leader, and like prevent something bad from happening to them. If you need someone to talk to, go talk to the supervisors. The supervisors play, right? They work, they're students just like you. So there's some relatability there. <coughs> So feel free to ask them questions um, and like, you know, vent, if you will, a little bit to them. Or have some of those. The officials, on the other hand, they're pretty much just there to work. Right? That's that's me. Yeah. As captains, we want you all to help us teach those sort of things, right? Within your players, within your team. And so do that by trying to set a good example when you're out there and noticing when you're Right? Or when something's happened, we've had a bad day, and they're bringing all that mess to the game tonight, and they're really physical that game, and someone's going to get hurt. Right? Like, talk to them about that. That kind of thing. Does that make sense? Okay. Cool. So, um, you know, I had a lot of sportsmanship meetings last year. Unfortunately, there's a trend in sports right now, like professional sports, all the way down to youth sports. And the trend is um, spectator behavior as greatly. Um, if you think about watching an NBA game, right, or an NFL game, or something like that, it's pretty common nowadays to see fans interact with players on the field in a negative way. And so that's kind of what I'm talking about, right? That's a very concerning trend, especially for a recreational league like us. So we do have spectators come out. We want spectators to come out. Spectators can provide an awesome atmosphere to the game, right? They can really build it up, but it has to be has to be done in a positive way, especially for intramural sports, the recreational league. So we encourage you, boyfriends and girlfriends, you know, whatever, come on out and watch, have fun. Um, for basketball, we have a specific area that they have to sit. Spectators have to sit in the spectator seating, which is raised up a little bit on the court, right, and the bleachers over there, they have to sit there. Um, I'll talk about coaches here today. Um, so, through a lot of those sportsmanship meetings that I had last semester in previous, I was like boiling my message down to these four things. We want you to have fun. Just don't fight, harass, talk, or threaten anybody. Other than that, do what you want. Have fun. Right? Does that make sense? Cool. So if you want to send a simple message to your players, you can use that. Okay, let's talk about some specifics for sportsmanship. So, um, technical fouls are two things, for the three things for the most part. They are unsporting behavior, they're used for jewelry, and they're used for dead ball contact for the most part. So um, technical fouls are the unsporting penalty, right, in basketball. So two technical fouls in a game will result in an ejection for an individual player, right? So let's avoid ejections. Flagrant fouls also um, are an immediate ejection. And then any ejections, there is a suspension uh, indefinitely from the show sports until the Okay, we do work with student conduct oftentimes just as a part of the bigger picture, like the bigger university setting. Um, it's great when I go the whole semester and I don't have to do that. So hopefully that's this semester. Um, I mentioned fans a little bit already. They do affect your sportsmanship rating as well. So it's your whole team, right? Your players on your team, um, anyone sitting on the bench, and anyone in the fans that are kind of rooting for um, we don't recognize coaches in intramural sports, there's no such thing. Again, it's recreational sport, recreational league. Coaches, like, they don't exist, we don't care about them. So, we do have a rule that says in basketball you're allowed one non-participant on your bench. So, if you want somebody to help you, like, coach you during the game, they can be there. Like, they, they can stand and they can, they can be there, they can walk up and down like a coach on the wood. Um, our staff is taught to be extremely strict on that person. So like that person can't call timeouts, right? They can't be disrespectful to staff, they can't be disrespectful to your opponents at all. Like 
like, no, first warning, gone. Just, just get out of there. Make sense? Cool. Um, this is just an incentive to help us clean up after yourself. So when your bench is done, pick up the water bottle. Right? Uh, walk the way out. Alrighty, that's it for sportsmanship. Any questions about sportsmanship? Yeah, so can you celebrate, but like not in like a taunting way? Yeah, great question. Of course. Yeah, celebrate. Celebrate with your teammates, right? Have fun with your teammates. Uh, when it becomes a taunt, that's where the technical foul comes into play, right? And so there's a thousand different examples that we could use, right? Every situation's a little bit different. Um, the, the celebrations, like the big like touchdown celebrations that we call them, right? We want to try to avoid those as much as we can. Like the everyone in the gym look at me because I just did something cool, you know, like that kind of thing. Staff's probably going to be sorry. Um, but for the most part, we want you to have fun. <coughs> that answer your question. Uh, yeah. Okay. So like, it, as long as it's not like directed towards an opponent or the whole team. You're only I will say team. when it is directed towards an opponent, it is a technical foul. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Two taunting texts that I gave last year. Someone made a three, pointed right at you, walked down the floor like this. Yeah. Another one did this, pointed at someone. As long as it's not directed. No. Yeah. As long as it's not directed at someone or directed at the other team, you're fine. Yeah, those are those are automatics. Okay. Yeah. Question. Yeah. But like, if you make a tough buggy, you can go too little as long as it's just not like directly at someone. Yeah. Any, any of those. So like, what we what we told our staff is like. Actually, go ahead, brother. Do you want? Oh, I mean, I I just left. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So any of those like you know the those directed. Right, so like if you're just trying to single somebody out, like the rock and the baby is a good one, right? If it's like this or this or like even that, you do want to try to avoid those um, because those are thin ice right there. Um, it's probably going to be up to the officials at that point in your game. So I'll be ejected. In context. <laughs> in context. In context. For sure. If, if y'all are. If it's the third quarter and y'all have been arguing with each other the entire game and y'all, you know, there's high tension in the game and then you do this, it's going to be different than if it's a co rec game where the score is four to six in the fourth quarter and y'all are all friends. Yeah, so well, it just, it, de it depends. I mean, a five foot tall girl who makes the bucket over the big guy, that's, that's a different serve. <laughs> yeah, then we laugh when she does it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, got this. Do we have another question? That's the other hand. Did you want to say something, bro? Yeah. Um, we're all people, supervisors and our officials. We do have a lot of new people. They, we all have obviously went through training, so we know what we're doing. If we mess up, please ask us questions. Don't come up and be rude to us. Um, at the end of the day, we're all people, and we do make mistakes. But please do not give our officials or our supervisors any crap um, or give them a hard time or anything. We're all going to be learning, so this first week, it's definitely going to especially even tonight, too, we have scrimmages. Um, so. Hopefully not get on a lot of those nerves and stuff. But mistakes are going to happen. We can't see everything. So if you guys have a question about something or if you're upset about a call, just please come ask us. Don't come up and be rude to us because then, you know, that could lead to your sportsmanship being ruined or, you know, getting a technical or whatnot. But we're always going to ask questions if you're respectful to us. So, you know, you respect us. We're going to respect you. We're going to answer those questions. So. At the end of the day, we're all the same age. We're all college students. It's not like we're old referees that you don't like when you see Okay, I'm not talking about you. I'm saying uh, in general. Sure, right. <laughs> Any other sportsmanship stuff? All right, I just want to wrap up with a couple of. There we go. Schedules will come out on Friday. Registration ends tonight. Um, you can add players to your team <laughs> point during the regular season. Once the regular season is over, we block the rosters so you can't add anybody at that point just because we don't want you to add a ringer because you realize your team sucks. The first four games, and then we don't win at all. Yeah, you're definitely yeah, like yourself. We do, we're doing a four week regular season this year, last year, so we expanded it a little bit. So you get four regular season games. Most of you will get four regular season games. Um, and then that kind of ends like around spring break and then playoffs will start after spring break, March 11th. And then playoffs is a single elimination bracket after that. So losing you're done. <coughs> um, here's some resources for you if you want some. We will send you all this PowerPoint. Um, we release the schedules on Friday. Um, but our website has a copy of our like intramural handbook, sports, basketball rules, that kind of stuff. Um, this is our Instagram 
account. I would encourage you all to follow us there. We'll post updates to that. Registrations, just like highlights and stuff for the season. Um, and as Ryan has alluded to a lot, we like to communicate. We love to talk to, to teams. So feel free to come into the office. If you have a question, email us or call us anytime. We're happy to help. Yeah. So say we have to like people, we don't have people coming in. It's like 3.30. That's number we call? That's it. Yep. Right there. 